Hello dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you will be fine. My name is Nair Zirbukhutya. I am director of the Department of Technology, Southern University of Science and Information Technology, Shao. As I am teaching you uh, the subject in the Anapathic Structure, today is the lecture number 19. In lecture number 19, we will see about the environmental impacts of them that when we construct the dam, what are the impacts that create on the environment. So in environmental impacts of dam, we will study about the terrestrial ecosystem and biodiversity, the greenhouse gas emissions, downstream aquatic ecosystems and biodiversity, impacts of changes in flow regimes, impacts of trapping sediments and nutrients behind the dam, Blocking migration of aquatic organisms, displacement of people and their livelihoods. So we will study about all of these one by one. First of all, uh, the terrestrial ecosystem and biodiversity. The con construction of a dam and subsequent inundations of the reservoir area effectively kill the terrestrial plants and forests and displaces uh, animals. As many species prefer a uh, very bottom, large scale environment may eliminate the unique wildlife habitats and the effect of pollution endangered species. Some efforts uh, are made to mitigate the impacts uh, on tuna uh, have met with little success. Uh, an alternative to mitigation is a compulsory project approach. For example, uh, around the world there is a legal requirement that forests flooded uh, by reservoir or dams must be uh, replanted uh, somewhere else. However, it has been found that uh, only uh, half of the required forests has typically, typically been planted and even this is uh, more poorly managed. Next is the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So the greenhouse gases, uh, that is GHQ, uh, from the reservoir into the rotting vegetation and carbon inflows from the catchment in a recently identified ecosystem impacts of the storage dam. Uh, first estimates suggest that the gross emissions from reservoir may account for between 1% and 28% of the global warming potential of the greenhouse gas emissions. This challenges the conventional wisdom that hydropower produces only positive atmospheric effects such as reduction in emission of carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, sulfur oxide and particulates when compared with power generation sources that burn fossil fuels etc. It also implies that all reservoirs, not only hydropower reservoirs, emit a greenhouse gases so, consequently, reservoir and catchment resources must be investigated to find the find out the likely level of greenhouse gas emissions. Next is the uh, downstream aquatic ecosystem and biodiversity. The aquatic life greatly affected uh, by the uh, construction of dam. Storage dams are intended to alter the natural distribution and timing of stream flows. They compromise the dynamic aspects of river that are fundamental to the maintaining the characteristics of aquatic ecosystem. Natural rivers and their habitats and species are a function of the flow, but this flow is discouraged or stopped by the construction of dam. The quantity and characteristics of the sediments in motion through the channel are the correct character or the composition of the material that make up the bed and banks of the channel. The defining river discharge includes both high and low flow elements. Next is the impacts of changes in flow regime. The flow is greatly influenced by the construction of dams. Flow regimes are the key driving variables for downstream aquatic ecosystems. Flood timing, duration and frequency 
are all the critical for uh, for survival of communities of plants and animal living downstream. Small flood event may act as biological triggers for fish and invertebrates migration. Major events create and maintain habitats by scouring or transporting sediments. The natural uh, variability of most river systems sustain complex biological communities that may be different from those adapted to the stable flows and conditions of a regulated river. The water temperature and chemistry are altered as a consequence of the water storage. Next is the impacts of trapping sediments and nutrients behind the dam. Due to the construction of dam, uh, all the sediments that are uh, traveling with the river water are stopped due to the construction of dam. Also, the nutrients with uh, from the upstream uh, coming towards the downstream are stopped due to the construction of dam. And the reduction in sediments and nutrients transport in rivers downstream of the dam has impact on channel, flood plan, and coastal delta morphology and causes the loss of aquatic habitat for fish and other species. The changes in river water turbidity may affect uh, uh, bio biota divertically. The reduction in sediment moving downstream from the dam leads to the degradation of the river channel. Next is the blocking migration of aquatic organisms. As a physical barrier, the dam disrupts the movement of species, leading to changes in upstream and downstream species composition and even species loss. The river dwelling species have several migratory patterns. The WCD survey found that impending the passage of migratory species was the most significant ecosystem impact. Recorded at over 60% of the project for which responses are on environmental issues were given. In 36% of these cases, the impact of the large dams on migratory fish was not anticipated during project planning. Migratory fish require different environments for the main phase of their life cycle, reproduction, production of juveniles, growth and sexual maturation. Many anadromous fish, uh, the fishes which are born in freshwater population, have died out as a result of ram, uh, dams blocking their migratory routes. Next is the impact uh, on dam, uh, impact of dams on water quality. The water quality greatly affected due to the construction of dam. The chemical, thermal and physical changes which flowing water undergoes when it is still can seriously contaminate a reservoir at the river downstream. The extent of deterioration in water quality is the is in general related to the retention time of the reservoir, its storage capacity in relation to the amount of water flowing into it, and uh, water in a small head pond behind a river of uh, run of river dam will undergo very little or no deterioration that stored for many months or even years behind a major dam may be lethal to most life in reservoir and in the river for tens of kilometers or more below the dam. Water release from deep in a reservoir behind a high dam is usually cooler in summer and warmer in winter than river water. While water from outlets near the top of the reservoir will tend to be warmer than river water all around, all year around. Warming or boiling the natural river affects the amount of dissolved oxygen and suspended solids it contains and also influences the chemical reaction which takes place in it. This altering natural seasonal changes in temperature can also disrupt the life cycle of aquatic creatures. The last one is the displacement of human and livelihood. An estimated uh, 40 to 80 million people have been displaced uh, worldwide because of the construction of the dams. Yet mitigation, compensation and resettlement attempts are often inadequate for these peoples. 
and this is the end of our today's lecture.